The arrival of the 20th century coincided with the arrival of modern navies around the world that would be recognizable even today. Recall how the United States had embarked on a significant shipbuilding campaign beginning in the late 19th century, culminating with President Theodore Roosevelt sending the Great White Fleet around the world in 1907 to send a message to Japan and the rest of the world that the United States had the ability to operate its entire fleet wherever and whenever it chose. Although the visit helped settle and smooth U.S.-Japanese relations for a time, it did not do so for the major European powers. Germany and the British Empire had been locked in a naval arms race since the late 19th century and were ramping up production even as the Great White Fleet departed Hampton Roads, Virginia, in December of 1907. The 1906 introduction of the British Dreadnought class of battleships, the first modern battleship, had also pushed Germany to redouble her efforts to close the gap in naval power between Germany and the British. This Anglo-German arms race was one of the key factors that helped push Europe into the First World War, and so accelerated the global naval building rates around the world, that by the time the Great White Fleet returned from its 14-month voyage, it was obsolete. The assassination of Archduke Ferdinand on June 28, 1914, marked the final spark that would ignite the powder keg of nationalist conditions, arms races, and alliances that was Europe during the first decades of the 20th century, and general war was declared one month later. The Triple Entente forces, composed initially of Russia, Great Britain, and France, squared off against the central powers of Austria-Hungary and Germany, and other nations and empires would join the conflict on both sides creating the first true world war. When World War I began, the United States made a concerted effort to remain neutral. Desperately trying to end the war early, Germany and her allies actively worked to avoid antagonizing the U.S., in spite of the sinking of the British merchant and passenger vessel Lusitania in 1915, killing over 100 American passengers. However, by 1917, Germany started waging unrestricted submarine warfare on merchant vessels, including those of the United States, in the hope that their submarine fleet could keep the U.S. well enough isolated from the conflict so as to minimize her contribution to the Allied war effort. With the sinking of additional U.S. merchant vessels and the interception by the British of the Zimmermann Telegram, a German attempt to convince Mexico to declare war on the U.S., the U.S. entered the war in April of 1917. The Navy played a variety of roles in the First World War, including transporting troops, escorting supply convoys, providing marine and heavy gun units, and a variety of other tasks. However, perhaps most significant from a naval perspective is the effort represented by our object today, a buoy from a World War I mine deployed in the North Sea Mine Barrage. In order to isolate and hinder German submarine efforts, the Allied forces laid a massive string of mines that stretched from the British Isles all the way to Norway. U.S. industrial efforts were key to this, and the mobilization of U.S. industrial power resulted in the manufacture and delivery of over 100,000 naval mines of various types. Our object today is a buoy recovered from one of those mines in 1919 during the demining of this massive minefield. Mine laying was nothing new to the U.S. Navy. By the time the U.S. entered World War I and undertook this massive mine laying effort, the Navy had been developing and using naval mines for nearly 150 years. The first true naval mines were developed during the U.S. Revolutionary War by David Bushnell, inventor of the first submarine, the Turtle. In 1777, Bushnell launched a mine attack by floating kegs of gunpowder, equipped with a contact detonator, down the Delaware River to attack the anchored British fleet near Philadelphia, an effort that, although unsuccessful, nevertheless terrified the British. This became known as the Battle of the Kegs. From then on, mines would play a key role in asymmetric naval warfare as a cheap device that could easily destroy a costly warship. 
This remains a serious concern today in the 21st century, and the new U.S. littoral combat ship was designed specifically to incorporate mine sweeping and defense functions. Mines would be used by the U.S. Navy throughout the next hundred years after the Revolutionary War, and were quickly adopted by navies around the world. Robert Fulton, featured in several of our earlier episodes and developer of one of the first steam warships, worked extensively on naval mines and provided the technology to the British in their war against France in 1797. During the Civil War, the Confederate Navy used mines extensively to protect its harbors and sank 27 Union ships. In comparison, coastal artillery batteries only sank nine. Mines would be used in most major naval conflicts around the world between the Civil War and World War I, including the largest naval conflict preceding the World War, the Russo-Japanese War, from 1904 to 1905. The mine buoy we feature today came from a Mark VI naval mine from the early 20th century. 76,000 of these were deployed in the North Sea Mine Barrage during World War I. This model featured a unique firing mechanism, a long, thin copper wire held vertically by a mine buoy like ours. When a submarine made contact with this wire, the contact with the copper wire and the electrolytic seawater activated the mine's firing mechanism. This allowed the vertical area covered by mines to be greatly increased. Mine development continues into the 21st century and poses a grave asymmetric threat to U.S. forces today, especially in narrow strategic waterways like the Strait of Hormuz. In the first Gulf War, the USS Princeton and the USS Tripoli were both struck by Iraqi mines, highlighting the continued threat of mine warfare even today. Mine delivery systems and mine clearing systems, known as mine sweeping, continue to be developed today as well. Modern mines can be delivered by ship, submarine, or aircraft, can launch their own torpedoes, and have a wide variety of advanced firing and targeting mechanisms. Equally advanced are the mine detection systems that exist today. Perhaps the most fascinating of these, employed by the United States Navy, is the use of sea lions and dolphins to locate and report back mine locations. Sea lions can even be trained to attach devices like buoys to underwater objects like unspent ordnance and mines. Thus, in the 21st century, mine warfare remains pivotal to the U.S. naval mission and strategy, and has been so since the early days of the Navy. We now go to Dr. Scott Harmon, retired director of the Naval Academy Museum, for a little bit more about our object today. This time we're looking at a very cheap weapon, a mine. Uh, this mine comes from a, uh, what was called a mine barrage that was laid during World War I to try and stop German submarines from attacking uh, British merchant shipping. Uh, the irony of uh, this uh, weapon is that before World War I, the major navies, England's Navy, the German Navy, the United States Navy concentrated on battleships. They were huge, expensive warships, but they were hardly used during World War I. There was one major battle, uh, that at Jutland, between the British and the German navies uh, without a, a real decision. The weapon that caused the most damage and almost brought England to its knees in World War I was the German U-boat the unrestricted warfare attacking convoys and ships going to England carrying the goods for survival. To stop those uh, German uh, submarines, the United States Navy laid several mine barrages. These were big fields of uh, mines in certain areas. The largest one was in the North Sea. About 70,000 mines were laid. But the fear that they caused uh, kept a lot of the German U-boats in port. Uh, so this is a very interesting uh, weapon. It is a weapon typically used by small navies. Uh, it's inexpensive, but it can cause a tremendous amount of damage to a battleship, 
and it can cause the complete loss of a submarine. So we have this in the World War I uh, exhibit, uh, typical of many of the mines that were laid trying to uh, keep down the threat of German submarines in the war against England. Thank you very much for joining us.